put those on here in a minute. Um, okay, so we are going live on multiple platforms all over the place, Facebook and Twitter and Twitch and YouTube. And hello to everybody. Welcome, welcome. All right, so we're going to be painting this beautiful piece today. So this is the transfer. We're going to talk about this first. Um, before we get into it, though, I am a couple of, well, about a minute early now. I'm going to check my Facebook page. Let's see, no thanks. Let's go to Facebook and said I'm live so that's a good thing okay good job yay that's a good sign all right all right so again I want to say hello to everybody we have a lot of people that are just now joining us so we are going live many places all over the World Wide Web. We're so happy to have you here. Um, I'm going to be teaching from one of our painting kits today. All of our painting kits are available on tipsyartist.com. Also, if you leave me comments um, or questions, um, I'm, I always go back through those and check those out and answer everybody and say hello to everybody. So again, thank you so much for being here. And let's see what else. Oh. If you haven't subscribed, we'd love it if you would subscribe. That helps us out a lot. And um, and like, like or love. <laughs> we're so we're so thankful for that. So that just makes makes my day. Um, okay, so let's have a visual here. So this is what we will be painting today. This is part of our St. Patrick's Day series. And I do have this painting, I think, already done without the St. Patrick's Day elements. So it's really easy to adapt either way. You can make it all year round, um, or you can add those shamrocks uh, for this particular holiday season. So either way works really well. And so let's talk about how we do this setup first. Um, and then I'm going to be here in a little bit. I'm going to change the camera to go down and have a really nice close up of uh, my process while I go through and do all the work. Um, so I've got my canvas. Now my canvas is that I use during these lives are a little bit different than yours. What I send out in the kit has some depth to it, has a wooden frame. So you can actually wrap the tape around to the back and it will connect to that wooden frame. Pretty much just a traditional canvas is what you get. I use flat boards because I have so many of these and that helps me with space and also economy. Um, but at any rate, so again, yours will be a little bit different, but we have the transfer paper and the line art and the tape and so how you do it is you just center everything and very helpful hint crucial details a matter of fact when you are doing your transfer paper you want to make sure that it is shiny side faces down that's what's going to transfer that line art to your canvas and then you want to have your dull side facing up and then again you just center this on top of that on top of your canvas we have tape that comes with the kit I only secure this image up at the top that way it does stay secure here again I also recommend wrapping there's a there's plenty of tape lots of excess amount of that so just make sure you get really long strips and wrap it around to the back. Make sure it connects to the wood. That will help keep it really secure. And then also have it on a flat surface. And then that will help stabilize it through the process too. And then I leave all the sides and the bottom untaped. And here's why. Um, because I can lift up constantly and check my work and see if I've done all the work I need to before I actually lift off because it's really hard to line it back up again once you're done so you want to keep double checking that uh, your kit comes with this pencil and then I just basically you just draw basically just right over the top of every single line and that will again transfer your image now I do not have a ruler with the kit which would be really helpful however this paint box is a straight edge. This comes with your kit. So I just use this straight line to just do all the buffalo check to help reinforce that. That line work is there, but it still helps stabilize the hand to have a straight edge to go and work up against. So I use this paint box as a straight edge to do the lines on the buffalo check. I also use it as a straight line to do the ship lap. And then <laughs> I don't know what 
what was going on if I was I am the tipsy artist but if I was tipsy when I did but you can see my lines were totally off like I had straight lines here and then I got to here and, and I was like what the heck I don't know what I don't know what I was doing so just ignore I'm gonna correct this template but for those of you who already have this at your house you're like yeah thanks that is weird um, so just you know use it like this and just know that you're not going crazy it is definitely off on this side so my apologies about that for those of you who already have this at home uh, but you can just use that straight edge to go ahead and do those lines all the way across um, also helpful hints for lettering on this so this is a little bit different if you do exactly what I do today and you keep this jar black then you'll want to darken into the negative space there see the loops how I've darkened those in because the negative reverse effect happens so let me just show you so see how it's white and you don't want to uh, have the line work so basically you can follow exactly what I've done no worries there but normally in my tutorials I'm always telling people to avoid the negative space but because we're doing a reverse and the whole background is black and the lettering is white then I actually go ahead and do the darkening inside the loop and I preserve the white space around that so that you have enough white space with your lettering around that so a little bit of a different perspective shift in how you think about doing the lettering today so be mindful of that before you start and if you, you know you still don't quite get it right on the transfer it's okay because we'll be taking white paint over the top and then painting over the top so that's that's all good there um, it's not unsalvageable or anything but again just you know a little helpful hint there be mindful of that so I'm just going to give you another oh, there we go close-up of how that looks and then again how this looks there so you can pause it on that and and take a good look at that you know while you're working on that you know particular part of this process here all right so I think I've talked about that enough we're going to actually get down into what it looks like here and working out our buffalo check pattern and I'm going to go ahead and shift the camera now so here we go I've got my little arm here we're going to move it around a bit Let's see, I promise we're going to get it. I saw it earlier. <laughs> All right. Awesome. All right, so here we go. We've got... <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so we have our surface area all ready to go. And we've got paint plates with your kit. I always paint a lot. I usually always have a lot of extra white and black out ready to go. You've got your paint kit. A little bit of advice here on this as you start to get these out. I'm going to be using a lot of paint kits that are already opened. So in case I forget to mention it early, uh, or later <laughs> it seems early to me I mean later um, there are foil lids on all of these and so you have to lift that off before the paint will actually come out so you want to be mindful of that too so if you're trying to get the paint out I was trying to think if there was one that was no I think I've got been into a lot of these here so I don't know if I can find a brand new one to show you nope oh well I'm gonna move along but you get what I'm trying to say little foil lids you'll have to lift that off before the paint will actually come out ah I found one see that you'll have to lift that off it's beautiful that helps it in shipping but again it does make it a little bit challenging to get the paint out and you'll be wondering what in the world is happening but that's what's happening All right, I also have some water nearby Again, paint paint plates I have your brushes basically it all comes to you in your kit right now like this you'll have to get into this this is where you'll find your pencil permanent marker your brush set your uh, tape all that is in there 
Okay, so good deal. I'm going to go ahead and lift this off now. I worked ahead, did that part ahead of time, and let's talk about Buffalo Check. So I do have this basically, well you saw how I had the graph work done, okay? So I'm going to give you a nice look at this. You can see this. Definitely use my permanent marker and my pencil for this. Now let me talk about this too. Once you get your transfer work done, it will look like a pencil line on every line. So I have worked ahead and I've taken my permanent marker and I've reinforced every line. So that took me a little bit of time to go ahead and do that. So I did all that. I think it's extremely helpful for beginners. Really helps the process. Then when I did my buffalo check, I went ahead and graphed out and worked out my darks and my lights. So I've started with my black and I started here and then basically around every black square is gray on all four sides. So top gray and then to your left gray, to your right gray, and then below it gray. And then I just took my pencil and I just did that shading on the side. And then that will tell you that you'll have to work in gray with your paint later. So, but that really helps you. And so this gives you a lot of confidence to work this out this way first. And then you can, you know, keep an eye on this video, pause it at this point and keep it focused there. And then that way you can just follow what I've done here. And then let's see, let's talk about this lettering here. So again, let's give you another visual on that. So I did go ahead and cut all around with my permanent marker. And now here's something else I want to say. If you get to a place where you do all this and let's just say it, it you close off loops and, or, or it gets off and your letters become unrecognizable. Do not panic. Go ahead and just paint the whole thing black. Then in our kit, we actually have lots of fun word options. You don't even have to use this word. We have tons to choose from. Love and uh, blessing, joy. You can't get too long and wordy on this because the space is tiny, but I know you could do love or joy, for example, or dream. Um, you could just cut that out with a little piece of transfer paper. When you're completely done painting this, let it set up and dry. Then take your tape and that transfer work and just tape it right over the top. And once the paint's dry, you could just retransfer again, whatever word you want, and then paint that on over the top too. So that's also a completely acceptable way to do this as well. So there's lots of ways to correct that, you know, even if you don't quite get it right the first time. Okie dokie, I'm so excited. All right, so let's see, we're gonna get started with our painting now. All right, so I am going to go ahead and start with my mama brush. This is a half inch flat Taclon brush. And I've got my titanium white. Let's give you a beautiful visual on this. Now mine's pretty used, but this is your titanium white. This is what you wanna start with. And initially you really just need, I mean, I would say like a nice um, dollop about that big, nice heaping dollop of that. And then just go ahead and you know do like a dime size heaping dollop of the black. And then we're gonna go ahead and start with just a little touch of water. I just barely pull that water in a little bit closer to where you can see it and see my action as I kind of go into that a little bit. My plate there. Okay, all right, good deal. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, I've dipped into a little bit of water. Let's go ahead and push into the white. Another reason why I love working on a flat surface, by the way, is because I do not have to worry about water runs. That is so lovely. All right, now let's go ahead and dip into a little bit of black. Did you see how tiny that is? Super tiny amount there. Let's go ahead and work that in. I am making a really light, light gray. 
This is going to be for my background. This is begging me. I'm trying to, always thinking about branding, you know. <laughs> All right, now let's work this back and forth. All right, so nice horizontal strokes back and forth here. I've got my daughter's bracelet on that she gave me. Um, let's see. See how pretty that is? A little dolphin, and it says Harmony on there, but it's dragging onto the canvas. Love you, London. Hold on, i got to take this off. It's going to drive everybody crazy. Here, I'm going to place that right there. It's going to be our little... beautiful reminder of my beautiful daughter right there okay there we go okay all right so a little bit more water a little bit more white tiny little touch of the black all right now I'm going to push that back and forth Now, you can see here that I'm actually doing an overpaint, and don't panic, because look how it is actually showing through. So again, a little touch of water in here, and this very light, light gray, and I'm going to take that back and forth. Now, while the paint is still wet, again, this is supposed to be um, representing some shiplap, some distressed wood in the background. So while this is still nice and wet, I can actually add some accents to that. I'm going to pull into a little bit more black, just a tiny touch more. This is still very wet. I pull from the side and just kind of lightly pull that in over the top of that really light gray. So again, that helps it look a lot more like old wood happening back there. And do the same thing here on the other side. Move this at a nice angle here. Those little dings, I don't know if you can hear those. I'm going to have to see that on the recording, but I've got my phone on, do not disturb, but it still comes through. Text messages still come through for me on my computer. I can't quite figure out how to get that off. I am trying to become as big of a geek as I can every day. It's a new passion. <laughs> new pursuit of knowledge. I'm learning. All right, isn't that pretty? I love that. Okay, so again, touch of water, more white, super tiny amount of black. Let's make that light gray again. And we're going to push this all the way through here. Alright, this is still nice and wet, so again, just barely touch into a tiny amount of that black. You can see how small it is. And while the paint's still wet, just barely pull that in. Light drag on the side.
and you want to hold that brush just parallel to the canvas. And then once we get to the buffalo check though, I'm going to stop with this crazy brush through because I want to preserve all this hard work that I've done. So I'm going to have to be a little bit more diligent about doing my cut in work. So, but I'm always about trying to create a really easy, fun experience. So as much as I can, I try to make it just very ah, therapeutic, really fun, light. And cut and work tends to be just a, of time when you have to focus a little bit more and it's not as carefree. So I try to eliminate as much of that as possible. But there are times when we still have to just really still focus a lot and come back in for that really nice tight cut in. So here it is. There is a cut in right there around the mason jar. And I'm going to go in with that light gray again. And we have to be careful here too. So we have some cut in work around the mason jar. So as I get around here, I'm going to show you something. End of the brush, I'm going to apply a little bit more firm pressure. And see, I make it really thin again. And then I'll use this to go ahead and do a nice thin line all the way around that mason jar. And then I'll work out from this. Pull that out to the side. All right, one more thing I'm going to do. I should have done this earlier, but I'm going to text my honey bear and have him look at YouTube and make sure the sound is good. YouTube sound and then I say love you and then send it off Ta -da! we'll see how it goes okay uh, hopefully he'll text me back and go you sound terrific <laughs> I'll go, oh, thank God <laughs> all right so a little pull in here from the side Look at that. That is beautiful. All right, now a little bit more of that white and a tiny amount of that black. See, I'm doing that cut in all the way around the mason jar now because I do not want to interfere with that buffalo chat. We worked really hard on that in that first stage. So we're going to do horizontal strokes just back and forth here from this side just going off the canvas. And we're going to use that line edge of the brush to do our cut in around this rounded part. Get a little bit of white, teeny tiny amount of the black if you have to remix, super tiny. More cut in here, get that excess off of there. It's 
kind of feather that out a little bit. And then we're going to take this all the way across. And he says, survey says, looks and sounds perfect, baby. Yay. But, and then he goes, love you. We always have to say that. We believe in that. All right. Now let's get a little bit more of that fun, distressed. Just barely touch that black. This is still wet, so let's do a, a light drag on the outer edge there. That's a little bit darker than what I have going on everywhere else. So I'm going to soften that up a little bit. More pressure. We can even grab a little bit more white. Take that in over the top. You know, as a matter of fact, pure white uh, doing this too is another light touch you can do too to create a different kind of distressed look over the top. I'll grab super tiny amount of that black. Let's pull that in from the side. Nice bit of distressed wood there. All right, so I'm super happy with the way that looks. We have our shiplap worked into the background. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and work it through a little bit in here, kind of dust it lightly across. I forgot about that little area right there. Okay. All right, good job. So I'm going to rinse out, taking my mama brush and working round and round and round into the water, applying firm pressure that helps release the paint from that brush, and then just kind of do a light little drag, scrape off the excess water, and then of course dry off here. Okay. Now it is time for roses. Okay, um, let's see, let's see. I want some beautiful primary magenta. And I don't want gray with it. I just want pure white, so I'm gonna come off to this side. Or you could even start a new plate. Your kit comes with two plates. Because if we do gray, it will make mauve, and I do not want that. So I'm going to do a little touch of the white with the magenta. And then working at home, I would actually let this set up and dry a little bit so that you don't get gray that mixes in with it. Of course, there's so little amount there. It's such a, a thin amount that it's going to be very minimal. I don't think it's going to affect the color too much, but just in case. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pull into that. Mine's still a little bit wet, but again, you can see it's, it's certainly not looking mob. It's going to be okay. And then plus, I'm going to just try to do a really light hand and just push this on right over the top. Beautiful. Now we're going to do this again. We have several little roses here. So initially our roses will look a lot like just big lumpy circles and that's exactly how we want them to look now I will tell you too that you can change up the color pattern a little bit and 
Let's see. You can add some, a little bit of some cadmium orange to this and it will make it into a beautiful coral if you so desire. I'm gonna give you a little demo on that in case you want some of that. So see how it kind of goes to a coral color that is the pink. See how pretty that can be? So that's certainly an option. And then just for fun too, I am going to place, I'm gonna take my little buddy brush here, and I'm actually going to do a little white rose off to the side because some people love to have just the neutral tones of just whites and grays and these you know, like sage greens and the greens. So let's do, this wasn't in the model, but I'm gonna do one of these over here to the side. Just a little lumpy circle of white. I'm gonna show you how to do a white rose. Well, we got a little touch of pink in there, but it will live. I have a saying, there are no mistakes, only possibilities, and there is a possibility. I'm gonna go ahead and push in that white a little bit more. Let's do one more. All right, scrape that off the end here. Now we're gonna work on details over these roses. So I have my uh, little bit brush here. And if you are doing the white rose, Let's get a little bit of that charcoal gray over the top, which is just a mix of black and white. And you just kind of wiggle the brush over the top and do like little tiny half circles, but definitely give it a little bit of a wiggle. And little half circles. And then right in the middle, you, this is a little shadow in the center. So you do what almost looks like a little comma little comma. There it is. Come around that edge a little bit. I definitely wiggle the brush as I go though and just kind of let what happens happens. So again just little half circles. Work in those little shadows. So that's how we can do really pretty white roses over the top. So again, just half circles. Work those around in a circular pattern all the way around towards the inside. All right, so there are a few little white roses tucked in there. Those are going to be lovely. And you can do the whole bouquet that way and keep a really neutral design too. It's really pretty that way. So I wanted to make sure and show you how to do that. Now let's go ahead and do some white, just pure white little bit brush. Now let's go ahead and do little half circles here. See, and just kind of wiggle that brush a little bit too and take that all the way around the rose. Kind of smear it a little bit. And it's almost like little like parentheses, parentheses, but wiggle, wiggle, wiggle all the way around. I've got that song going through my head. Not the one that's playing behind me, but that wiggle it just a little bit. There you go. That's what you need to do right now. If my kids were watching, and they might be, but maybe. Well, Hawkins never does. He's a teenage boy, so there's a big no on that. But <laughs> my daughter's in college. She's a little more supportive. But she, my, my daughter's way supportive all the way around. She'd be like, oh, Mom, you're so cute. And Hawkins would be like, Mom, don't ever do that again. <laughs> all right, so again, little wiggles around those little roses. Man, those are gorgeous. You're going to be looking down at your roses going, those are fabulous. I love it. Little half circles. Give yourself a little wee. Beautiful. Okay, so 
some people love it just like that. I'm going to take it one more step further, do a little wipe here on my rag. Let's go into our um, magenta, primary magenta. I almost lost my words. Words, please. <laughs> All right, let's do that little shadow right in the middle. Little comma. Choo. And again, just a few of these little wiggles of half circles all the way around. So again, there's my little shadow, little comma, shoo. And then do our little half circles all the way around here. All right, little comma. Little comma. You can feel a little bit more of that definition happening. Kind of work that around. These are little shadows behind the petals. And if you ever feel like you get, you know, a little bit too much in one direction or the other of light or dark, now remember you can always come back in and maybe add a little bit more white and just rework it the other direction. All right, so we have some beautiful roses happening here. And now we're going to start to work into our beautiful greens. So working on the other side of the plate here, I'll be adding in some bright yellow green as an option. We'll just do some generous pea size amounts. Cadmium green, that's kind of fun to get into. It's kind of like an emerald green, I think. And then I love, love, love my Viridian. Oh, and you know what else? Let's grab some primary cyan blue because I might want to pull in some turquoise into this as well. It's a little different than what I have in the first model that I did. I still have my white up there. We'll be working in with that as well. So we'll need a little bit more of the titanium white. Let's grab some clean titanium white. Put that over to the side here. All right, so here's what we've got nearby. We've got our white, our blue, our bright yellow green, our cadmium green, and our viridian. Okay, so now let's mix up some beautiful colors, and then we're just going to play a lot from there, just, you know, kind of going all around with different shades of green. First, green that I'm going to show you is more of a sage green. So I'm going to grab some of this white from up here. Tiny amount of that black. This will give us a gray. And then let's go ahead and grab some of that bright yellow green. All right, so that's pretty interesting. And then we can even make a darker shade of it. So white green and a tiny amount of that black. So that's the cadmium green. Let's add more gray to that. Now we're getting into that sage. So I'm just giving you options here. Some of these you may not like at all, and that's totally fine. You might want to stick with more of the bright greens Again, that those gray qualities, that makes it kind of interesting. So again, cadmium. 
and essentially gray and cadmium green. All right, so I definitely have some of that in the model. Now we can kind of dip into those, play a little bit with those. All right, now I'm gonna rinse out and then we're going to create some turquoise. Ah, so let's get some blue, some viridian, and some white. We're going to have that really pretty turquoise to work into as well. Now, let's show you what Viridian looks like with white, because it's also like really fabulous. See, we've got lots of stuff to play with now. So that is just white and Viridian. It's super, super beautiful. And then we added that blue to it, and that brought us to a turquoise. And then the other thing I love to do is just mix up white with our greens. It's like white and just cadmium green is super lovely. And now we have all these fun shades to play with all the way around. And again, some of these you can just not use at all or you can just kind of pick and choose and go, hmm, okay. Lots of nice options and just kind of do your own thing. All right, so we have had fun mixing. I'm gonna go ahead and take my little bit brush. This is my uh, just round Taclon brush. And I'm gonna go ahead and go into, let's see here, a little bit of the cadmium green and white. And just a little touch of that Viridian. And we're going to make the line here and then a loop. So we have fun little loops off of these branches, or stems rather, sorry about that. I guess you could theoretically have some branches in here too if you wanted some. I guess that brings me to, I'm not going to paint those, but brown is cadmium orange and black if you would like to make some brown. Now I'm going to go ahead and fill into those loops and I kind of turn the brush handle over to the side, kind of lightly press into that space. Again, this is cadmium green, white, and a little touch of viridian. So I start with that beautiful stem, go up for a loop, take it back down to the center. And you can see how I'm getting those different shades. Some of those will peek out into the blend. Another little loop. All right, so this is getting really close to this one, so I'm gonna define that a bit more with some Viridian. It's quite a bit darker, so I'm gonna bring that in and see how that kind of makes that one pop out in front. And then I'll work into the inside of that one. Another loop here. Lightly feather this out. And again, when you go to fill in, make sure and kind of turn that handle more over to the side. Light hand over to the side.
and as I work I'll just again I'll grab sometimes some different shades so I'm kind of dipping into that bright yellow green and then I've got my cadmium green and my white and my viridian All right, now we have fun little leaves to work in. So I'm gonna grab some of this viridian with the white. And you can even get touches of turquoise in here too and kind of see what that looks like. And sometimes it's just little touches in here, like you just almost kind of just put the brush down with a little bit of pressure and that gives a little leaf shape. But it's also like a parenthesis and another parenthesis and then you just fill that in. And then once you do your little parentheses, parentheses, then you can kind of taper it out to a little point at the end. And I'm going back into that green a little bit, mixing it up. Grab a little bit more white into my turquoise, lighten that up a little bit. So I've got shamrock, shamrock, shamrock there. A little leaf here. Little stem there and the little uh, little leaf off to the side just again parentheses parentheses and connect and I'm gonna do more of that turquoise here it's also going to be nice to have the turquoise next to the shamrock. It will make that shamrock kind of pop out and be a little bit more uniquely and differently green compared to that. It's like I'm going to come back in over this too and just add a little bit more of the turquoise. a little bit more texture keeping it light doing this one here too because we'll have that shamrock right next to it and that will help and this is a, a really pretty overpaint anyway it's just a really nice look and let's do a little more turquoise here and here. Again, a little bit more white, a little bit more of that turquoise blend, and let's just do a little circle and then 
push into that shape. Grab a little bit more white. There's my turquoise. And again, let's just work in those little shapes again. Parentheses, 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 parentheses. It's just that easy. And just fill it in. Hold that brush more out to the side. Now let's get that. I'm going to grab a little bit more of the darker viridian. We're going to do that stem right through the middle. Again, this is a little bit and little touches of viridian kind of accentuating each side of that little leaf that go up to the side. All right, now we have uh, shamrocks that we need to work in. I'm going to rinse out. I'm going to get back to those pure greens. And speaking of, let's grab, yeah, let's grab a little more. Here we go, cadmium green. So I'm going to stick with either bright yellow green or cadmium green. Let's go with those together. And possibly a little dab of white here too. Yeah. I'm liking that. So our little shamrock shapes, they are basically little sweet hearts. that just connect all together. So that's just like painting that little heart on top and then one to each side. Again, this is cadmium green, bright yellow green, and a touch of white. Also, I spin the head of the brush into the paint a little bit to get that tapered back out to a nice fine point. Sometimes that belly of the brush can get really full and that hurts a little bit when you're trying to get into a small area. And then we'll fill this in. Let's feather that out. Hold that brush a little bit more over to the side, parallel to the canvas. And let's get that stem in there. And now we've got this cute little shamrock. Again, hearts to each side. Let's not forget our stem here. Fill that in. I'm not afraid of texture on that too. There's a lot of thickness with the paint on those. So little hearts. Lightly fill that in.
And sometimes you have to spin that brush out to, again, remember that little twirl where you twirl it back out to get that nice fine point. Make it tiny again. Little stem. Alright, so we've got some really beautiful shamrocks happening. I have a little touch of orange there too. I'm not sure. I guess I must have it. Oh, look at that. See? Yeah, there's the culprit. All right, so I'm going to take a little a clean brush, a little tap of water. Let's try to work that off there. There, I lifted that off. Okay. Oh, look at that. <laughs> I forgot about him. Big old shamrock right in the middle. Um, you know what? I'm going to wait on that one. That's a, that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and work on the buffalo check next. So let me get my here it is, uh, little buddy. And this is easy. I'm going to grab a little bit more white. It's clean. My other white's been kind of poked into quite a bit. So we need some gray. So a little touch of black with the white. Let's make a gray. That is a nice gray. I like that. Okay. And again, this is Little Buddy, a little quarter inch flat brush. And we're going to go ahead and paint into our buffalo check here. So I just use the flat side to work into this shape. You can also hold it. Now, okay, let's talk about this a little bit. Firm pressure back and forth. Still loads the brush, but let's check our end. See how it's nice and thin? So this becomes really helpful when you're doing a nice thin line edge like that. I'll touch that leaf up in a little bit. It kind of chopped off the end of the point, but I'll get that later. And I don't think buffalo check has to be extremely perfect either. I know sometimes people just drive themselves insane on trying to create extreme perfection here. And I feel like you can just roughly get into the squares. And it has a really nice read to it as being authentically hand-painted. I think too much perfection takes away from the beauty of things, honestly. I mean, you want people to know that you actually hand painted something and that you didn't just buy it at Walmart. 
and too much perfection to me looks like all the screen printed work that you see at Walmart so I don't know I'm just I know to each his own but I love the look of just real hand painted work I also love the look of freehanding lettering too so but I have succumbed to the desire for perfection. I know too many people just cannot stand their own handwriting. And that, you know, to be fair, I guess in this digital age, so many people are not learning good penmanship. So, but I do encourage you to embrace as much of that as you can. I think it makes the piece more valuable and it more, I think more people appreciate it when they feel like they see the unique hand of the person who did the, the artwork. I know I certainly feel that way about like my children's work for me. I love all the pieces that they did on their own without templates, without, you know, um, like a scripted word like this that they just actually write their own word on there for me I just love that all right so I try to do all the big sections that I can and then I am going to have to get into really tiny areas as much as I can here with little buddy but I'm still gonna have to get my little bit brush probably but that's looking really awesome all right so I'm gonna put little buddy into the water let's grab my little bit brush here a little wipe here on the end sorry about the did not mean to bump the camera uh, let's grab a bit more of that gray so again this is the white and the black And there's a little tiny area. Little bit is definitely very essential in here. A little bit up here. Don't forget about those little tiny amounts of gray. So I'm going to work back in. I've got a clean little bit brush. I'm going to go back into a little bit of that turquoise. I said I was going to retouch this up a little bit. Kind of drag that out right over the top. A little fine point there. All right, now we can finish up that cute little shamrock right in the middle. All right, so we're gonna go back to our little bit brush and our green and our bright yellow green. And we had a little touch of white in here too. And again, just little hearts to each side. I'm a little bit heavy on the texture. I just really like it. In the stem though, I have to thin out, so I do a little spin into the paint to thin out that brush a little bit. And 
as I want to smooth this out, feather out those brush strokes, turn that handle just a little bit more over to the side. And that gives me a little bit more coverage and then also kind of smooths out the digs into the paint that happened when the brush was turned the other direction. All right, that's looking really good. Now you have an option here. This is what I did with the permanent marker. And of course, we can go ahead and start to paint into that to give it a more painterly look. So, yeah, a little bit of water to that brush and I've got my black now. This is Mars Black as a visual. Here it is, Mars Black. Also, I leave a little touch of white there. I did that in the trace, but that preserves that little hint of shape with the mason jar. And I'm going to come in, come in with white here. And I'll do another accent. Now that black's already there, so you can choose how much of this really fine detail you want to do to, you know, really be meticulous and paint all the way into it. Sometimes people have a really shaky hand, so they just go ahead and leave it all permanent marker. And then you can see what I did, which is kind of a loose sketch of paint in and around those letters. Definitely comes back in and creates a painterly look. But to be safe, I'll probably even avoid the little tiny loops there, the negative spaces in the lettering. Taking the safe road. Just leaving that just the way it is. Calling that good enough. Okay, and then we have a little bit of a line here that I want to re-emphasize. So we'll let this set up for a little bit. Let's go back to our mama. Let me grab my rag here. Take my mama brush, dry it off. See, it's very thin on the edge, which I want and need. I'm going to come back into my black. Firm pressure back and forth. Let's take a look. Still nice and thin. So I go ahead and just follow the line edge there. This brush had just a little bit of water that helped lift off that little excess amount of black at the end. Now, you can't do a straight line around the curve here. Will not work. So put Mama back into the water. Grab a little bit again. Twist that into the black. And we're going to go ahead and curve that all the way around.
Now you can also add a little bit more water to the black, really thin that out, almost like a watercolor look, really spin it out tight, nice fine point. And you can also start to do little tiny little shadows of lines around some of these little leaves in here. This is kind of an optional step, but I'm very uh, delicate when I do this. Just barely touch the canvas, super light touch. So you can just add a few of those little details in there. Do a few of those just to give you some options. And then on this one too, I'm going to show you what it looks like to have, you know, the black outline come back around that shamrock. Helps almost create like a little drop, sh uh, drop shadow there. Take that all the way around. Again, you might like it softer without the line in the beginning. That's, that's up to you. Just like to give you some options here. And then I've got a little line right up to the middle. And each time I go in, I, I do a retwist because I have to keep doing that each time to get back to that thin little line. A line there. Again, just kind of pull it out to the side, light touch. All right, now for some white accents. Taking our little bit brush again, let's go into some white. Just pure white paint. And right where it indents in here, I'm gonna make just a soft curve. And same thing here, right where you see a little curve in here, I'll make another little soft curve. And then lift off with a light hand. Okay, just trying to think what else here. All right, now let's go back into a little bit of some shadow and a lot of water. Now this next step is very optional because you can leave it super clean and light just the way it is without any shadowing. But you can also add a little shadow if you want. So I'm gonna take my um, let's see, let's grab my little buddy. All right, so little buddy, that's little buddy right here, quarter inch flat brush. Let's get him where you can see, uh, ta-da, that's better. All right, so we have a little bit of water, a little bit of that charcoal gray. You can see how the texture, how watercolor it feels almost looks like a watercolor so definitely can make it watery and then we're gonna go ahead and just lay the brush kind of on the side here and just kind of lightly kind of shadow this in a little bit swipe that all the way around keep wiping on my little paper towel here and then just kind of rub that out a little bit kinda pull that down and let's feather that out a little bit And there's no reason why you can't try this. It's a little bit more of an advanced step, but you can try it. If you just don't like it, I mean, you can just kind of paint over it too. 
go right back to your neutral. And I'm just going to softly go up to about right there and then just stop with this particular look. Let's make a little line of that light gray there. Again, it's real watery. I just pull in a little bit more water. Just kind of lightly rub that in. Let's wipe, get the brush dry. Now firm pressure back and forth to work into that. Kind of rub it out. Kind of dry off the brush to rub back into it. Kind of feather it back out. And then light. Dry the brush, go back into it, kind of feather it back out. Now go into the watercolor look again, kind of line that out there. And then let's dry the brush and just kind of feather back into it. So that's a little bit different. And again, I'm all about what's for beginners, so if that's a little bit more advanced than you want to go, then just ignore it and leave it just the way it was. <laughs> so, all good. All right, now back with our little buddy. Let's go back into more of that darker charcoal, a little touch of white. Let's do a darker charcoal. Get our nice line edge again. Make sure it's nice and thin. And then we're going to get that shiplap going on the side here. So just a little sketch out to the side. And you know what? I actually, I think I actually prefer Mama on this one. So I'm going to go back to Mama. Because believe it or not, having a bigger brush creates a longer line edge. And it actually helps keep your hands steadier through this process. So I'm going to do a little bit more water again. Firm pressure. There's our dark charcoal. Make sure it's really thin, and then you can just follow that line all the way across. And that's my last one. Yay! Okay, that looks absolutely beautiful. I love it. All right, now this is all dry here for me, so I can go ahead and just sign it here with my permanent marker. I actually prefer to do that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and sign. Ta da! Dipsy Artist, there it is. All right, so we are done. 
I want to thank everybody again for joining us today. I had so much fun with y'all. This was a really cute project for St. Patrick's Day. And again, we do have this project online uh, without all the shamrocks too. So if you want to keep it um, just up all year round for any season, you can just watch this one and leave those out um, or do the other one. We have both of those available for you. So all of our painting kits are available at tipsyartist.com. And uh, we just, our goal here is to make it really fun and easy for beginners. So, yeah, please join us. Have fun with us. Be a beginner with us, even if you've never painted before in your life. A lot of fun. And if you do have any questions, be sure and leave those for me in the comments. Or if you have any comments, um, we love that too. So we try to encourage everybody, and we also love encouragement. But, yes, thank you again so very, very much. We hope you all have a beautiful day, and we will see you all soon. Y'all have a beautiful day. See you soon. Bye-bye.